Alright, so as this is my first video where I'm going to go over how I made this template for my uh, teardrop camper. Uh, basically, there are two or three different methods for framing a teardrop. One is a stick frame method, which I'm going to show you later on. Uh, there's a cutout method, which is sort of a variation of stick frame. And there's a solid wall method. With each of the methods, there's a trade-off in time and materials uh, and weight. Um, the, the simplest method is the solid wall method. Basically you take a, a piece of plywood, you get it the basic overall size, you trace the front curve and the back curve on it, and then you um, cut that out. Uh, this is kind of what I've done here for the template. Uh, the only difference is, is the template is a, a 3 16 inch piece of plywood, whereas a side wall would typically be a, a half inch or a, a usually a three quarter inch piece of plywood. Um, trade off there is, uh, even though it's really, really quick to do, really easy to do, is that it's uh, pretty heavy because you've got a, a entire thickness of a piece of plywood there. And um, also it's not insulated. Uh, there's, there's different schools of thought on the insulation, uh, but typically uh, if you're camping in a, a cooler climate, you can uh, tend to get some condensation on the inside walls and so we've chose to do and this is how we did the the first teardrop we built was to do an uh, insulated uh, teardrop uh, stick frame just to kind of give you an idea this is what it's going to look like I'm, I'm actually making this video as a reverse um, I've already built the stick frame but for now we're going to talk about the template template is the overall uh, frame or overall shape of what the teardrop is going to look like and our template, uh, this is the front, it's going to have a, a flat front, it's going to have a sort of around a, a radius, 24 inch radius there at the top, and it's going to come back here, and this is actually a, a 42 inch radius here on the back, and then, a, and then a small curve down here at the bottom. Uh, this is a four foot tall this way by nine foot long this way so this is a started off as a four by eight sheet of uh let's see here what i'm using for the template it's the underlayment it's a very stable birch laminated underlayment here uh costs like 11 bucks at the big box store but you can see here how i added a joint at the bottom basically i took a six inch piece of the material but it's the two joints together and I glued it. It's very strong. I could pick it up by that piece itself and it would not break. So I glued an eight foot by four foot piece onto a four foot by one foot piece, let that dry for a day. I then came in here and I made some critical uh, measurements on the piece of plywood. The first being the thickness of the floor. My walls are gonna sit on top of my floor. So when I get done, uh, my floor will occupy this space here and my walls will sit on top of that. The very outside edge here is going to overlap the edge of the floor. So I allotted for that distance there. In my case that distance is um, it's going to be about an inch and I think it's an inch and three, three eighths or so. So I drew a line here all the way down my template. Uh, the other thing I did was that front Top curve is a 24 inch curve. I just measured uh, 24 inches from the top, 24 inches from the bottom. And where those two lines crossed, I then took and drew a radius. Um, I'll insert some pictures here in a minute to show the tool that I used to do that. I also did the same thing back here. This is a 42 inch radius, so I measured 42 inches down from the top, 42 inches from the bottom. Where those two lines crossed, I drew a radius. The next thing I did was I made some critical uh, drawings on here. I measured my my door measurement. If you can see right here, that rectangle is my door. I also drew my hatch wall. This is where my spar is going to sit that my hatch is going to attach to. That blue line is the countertop. The reason those are critical are those are points where I'm going to need reinforcement in the wall so that I have something to attach to. Um, that'll be areas that I center a, a one by piece of material on in the wall. Um, 
so that I can then screw my cabinets and my walls into those from uh, with pocket screws from the inside of the, the cabin. Uh, I took this whole thing, cut it out with a jigsaw when I got done, cut the front curve, cut around the back curve, trimmed everything off. Uh, it's really important that you get that curve really, really smooth. I worked on that with some sandpaper, made it really, really smooth. Everything that you use um, this for, you're going to trim back with a router to that curve. So if you have any bumps in it, you'll have bumps in the final product. So you want it to be as, as smooth as possible. Now this curve down here is just a, a kind of a freehand curve. I had a piece of uh, plastic and I bent that down to what I thought looked about right. And I uh, drew a line and then, and then uh, cut it and smoothed it out. All right, so to continue here, um, I stopped and stood up the template there so you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. I'm going to try to back up here. You can see the overall shape of the template has a, a curve here in the front. And from the front here, just to give you an idea of size, from the front to where that blue line starts and you have that vertical set of lines going up, that's six foot three. Um, may not look it, <laughs> doesn't actually look it to me, but that's six foot three. That will allow most people who are six foot, six foot one to lay down comfortably and sleep. Uh, most people think you need as much length as you do your height to sleep in and you actually don't. If you're six foot tall, uh, you can get away with a little bit less than that to sleep in. Uh, most people don't lie flat out and if they do their heads tilted up a little bit. So, but anyways, you could, uh, I'm six foot one. I could probably get away with six foot or so. Uh, the camper I sleep in now is six, six foot three and I have plenty of room. So anyways, this is just an overall profile. This will show you what the, the side of the camper will look like when it's done. Um, and, uh, that's about it. Um, next step is to frame up the walls. I showed you those at the start of the video. Um, so in my second video, I will show you how I did that. Thanks.